All right, I got a fun one for you guys today. About a year ago, I did a video where I built an outdoor chase lounge for my backyard. And since then, I've realized that the chase needs a complimentary design table to complete the set. So today, I'm building the perfect companion piece that I've affectionately dubbed the toadstool table. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, this table is designed to complement the chase lounge that I built last year. So to keep things consistent, I again went with four quarter cypress for the build material. So here I'm just planning my boards down to a thickness of three quarters of an inch. And I do this a day ahead of the build just so that the boards have about a day to acclimate to the shop. Once I have my boards thickness down, I put a clean edge on them over at the joiner. Now the first thing I need to do is make a panel for the table base. And this panel is going to be where I get both sides of the table base from. So I want to make sure that it's nice and flat and has some nice grain direction so that everything feels consistent. Since this panel is going to be making up our table base pieces, I avoided putting any biscuits or dominoes into the center seam because then I'd have to worry about it later when we're cutting out the half lap joints. So once I had a perfect amount of glue applied to the seam, I went ahead and added some clamps, then threw on a couple calls just to make sure the panel stays flat. Now while the panel dries, I went ahead and cut out my two templates over at the CNC. The plans for this project will be linked in the description below, and they'll include printable templates as well as the CNC file. So if you don't have a CNC, you can print out the full scale templates and tile them together and stick them on. So yeah, a CNC is definitely not a requirement for this one. All right, so our templates are off the CNC. The first thing I want to do is lay these out, then cut them out over at the bandsaw and flush trim them over at the router table. The small gaps that I left here for the material thickness are a little bit off, so I'm going to make a small jig for that in a little bit, but let's get these guys laid out so we can get them cut out. So I laid out my templates, making sure that the center of my joint lines up with the center of my panel, or at least as close as possible. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Anyway, Next, I cut the panel in half over at my crosscut sled, then took the pieces over to the bandsaw to trim them out. While a bandsaw is great for this process, it's not 100% necessary. You could absolutely cut these out with a jigsaw. What I'm aiming for here is about an eighth of an inch of material remaining outside of my line. We don't want to cut into the line because obviously that's where our template's going to go here in a minute. So for some of the tighter cuts, I just cut a couple relief cuts in, then went around business as usual. And this would have been a heck of a lot easier with a smaller blade, but that broke earlier on another project, so this is what I got. And as my son's teacher says, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. As I mentioned earlier, my material for my panel was a little thinner than I wanted it to be. So I went ahead and glued in a small section back into my template so that I didn't have a gap to worry about when I was template routing. I've mentioned this before, but a lot of woodworking is just adapting to what you got. So we'll address this with a different jig later on. So once I stuck some double sided tape to my workpiece, I could attach the template. From there, I could set up my flush trim bit over at the router table. And since I'm using the bottom bearing of this ultimate flush trim bit, I want to set the bearing just above the workpiece edge. This allows the bearing to ride smoothly along the MDF template and not dig into the workpiece. And the great thing about working with Cypress is that it's a pretty forgiving material. So if you do have a little bit more than an eighth of an inch on your material, it shouldn't be too much of a worry. And if you don't have a router table, a palm router and a flush trim bit would also work for this process. The great thing about these compression bits is that going up grain and down grain is really easy because they don't seem to tear out very often. But whether you're using a straight bit, a spiral bit, or a compression bit, just take your time so that the piece doesn't grab and get hurled across the shop. And if it does, do like the song says and let it go. With both my base pieces cut out, I could now work on that half lap joint. So with the template still attached, I marked out the center point in my work piece. Then I measured from the top of the base to the bottom and divided by two to get the length of the half lap. And then transferred that dimension over to a sheet of half inch plywood. Then over at the table saw, I trimmed that piece off and then ripped it in half. This will give me two sides of my template. Then from there, I cut out one more piece, the thickness of my material. This will act as a spacer for setting up the template. From there, I place the spacer between the two pieces we cut for the half lap length and glue those pieces to a larger sheet of plywood. Once the CA glue is dry, the spacer can be removed and we'll have our template. So while I'm finishing that up, if you're finding this video useful, please take a moment to give it a like. It helps the video spread to more people and I really appreciate the support. Thanks. So again, with the template assembled and the glue dry, I could remove the spacer. So next I marked out the center of the spacer and then aligned it with the center of the workpiece. This will help lay out the lines for removing the material over at the bandsaw, as well as help me line up the templates later on. Since we're going to use these templates over at the router, we're going to want to remove as much material as possible at the bandsaw. Luckily for me, I have this wide resaw blade installed, so this works out perfectly. Then basically what I want to do is make two cuts along each edge, then a third and fourth cut in the center to remove the remaining material. I'll get as close as I can to the bottom of the joint, but again, we don't want to go over here. Oh, and again, this cut could be made with a handsaw or a jigsaw if you don't own a bandsaw. So back over at the router table, I installed a smaller half inch bearing compression bit. This should easily fit into the groove we just cut at the bandsaw. So next I attached my template and then got to work template routing it out. 
Now being that this bit is much more narrow than the previous bit, it easily fits into the groove. However, it will leave rounded edges in the corners that will need to be cleaned up with a chisel. And if you're interested in either of these compression bits, I'll leave links to both of them down in the description. Alright, so with both sides of my half lab joint routed out, I go ahead and clean up the corners of the joint with a chisel. And just to make sure that the joint is in the center, I overlaid each piece and made sure it met in the middle. If I didn't do this, I run the risk of there being a small gap in the joint, and we want to try to avoid that. Next up was to round over all the edges of the base, excluding the top where it would meet the tabletop. And I'm using the same bit that I used on the Chase Lounge, which is a quarter inch round over bit. And then finally, I could gently assemble the joint and check to see if there's any discrepancies in the fit. If there are, don't force it, just finesse the joint until it's nice and snug. All right, so our base pieces are all cut out and trimmed out. Just be careful when you're putting these together and taking them apart a lot. Uh, you can split the wood, obviously, since everything's running with the grain. Next, we're going to work on the top. And to do that, we're going to cut out our slats the same way that we did on the Chase Lounge so that everything matches and it feels like a cohesive set. So let's get to the table saw and get those cut out now. So over the table saw, I cut the slats down to an oversized length. Since these are going to be cut in a circle, we don't need or want them to be the exact width of our circle. We want the slats to be a little oversized so we can trim back to our final dimension. Just hopefully that dimension isn't anything like that recent Doctor Strange film. So with the slats trimmed to their rough length, I could go ahead and trim them to their final width. Now this one we do want to be the final, because it's going to equal the same width as the slats on the chase. But all this isn't to say that this table can't be a standalone piece. I think it's an awesome little toadstool table, and it'd be an awesome addition to any backyard. And speaking of additions, why not add yourself as a subscriber? I make new videos every two weeks, so I hope to see you there. And thank you for your support. Alright, so next I took the slats over to the router table, where I rounded over the top of each slat. This will ease each slat into one another, and give us a better finished piece. I don't round over the bottom here, so there's some contrast between the top of the table and the bottom. But if you want to round them all, go for it. So to hold the slats together, I needed some cross sections. Luckily I still had a few sticks of cypress in my scrap pile, so I just grabbed those. Then I brought them over the planer to thickness them down. About a half inch should do. From there I cut out a few strips of quarter inch MDF to use as spacers for the slats. Next I laid out the slats and dropped in the spacers. To hold the slats together, I'm going to use some blue tape. This will just keep things in place while I lay out the supports. And that's got to be like use number 5014 for blue tape in the shop. But who's counting? Alright, so with our slats held snugly together, I could lay out the center point. And this is important because this is where the center of our circle is going to start. Once I had the center point marked, I could lay out the outside strips. And these supports are going to be the outer strips that hold the slats together. Some of these will get trimmed off in the circle cutting process, but we'll address that here in a minute. So next it was time to attach those supports. And to do that, I'm going to use a combination of CA glue, wood glue, and screws. First, I laid down a couple of dots of CA glue, then a couple of dots of water-resistant wood glue, before spraying some activator and attaching the support. The CA glue is going to act as a clamp and hold the support down tight while the wood glue dries. From there, I could pre-drill for my screws and then drive them in. Because this is a large circle, the outer screws will need to be removed when I cut it, but I'll leave them in place for now just so that they hold the slat in place and then give some time for the glue to adhere. From there, I could repeat the process for the remaining five supports. Now my inner supports are offset, and this is just to give room for that X shape in the table base. Next I wrap my center marking lines around to the top of the table. This is because the circle jig that I have for my bandsaw needs to be used on a flat surface, so I need to cut the tabletop upside down for it to work properly. So after setting up my jig with the center hole at the radius of the circle, I went ahead and cut a scrap piece of plywood out to fix my tabletop to. Then using double stick tape, stuck it directly to the center. This is going to act as the guide for the circle cutting jig. So once the plywood was attached, I drove in the jig screw. And if you're using a jig like this, make sure you don't drive the screw all the way in, otherwise it won't spin very easily when you're cutting the circle. From there, I could bring the whole setup over to my bandsaw. And if you're not familiar with this type of circle cutting jig, let me know down in the comments and I'll outline it in a future video. From there, I just guide the jig down the miter slot and rotate to cut the circle. I did have to stop, however, a few times just to remove those screws that we talked about earlier from the outside edge. Another option would be to create a template and do this at the router table, or you could just use a jigsaw and sand back to a circle. The jigsaw and sandpaper method will just take a little bit longer. Unfortunately, when I cut out the circle, I did cut through a couple of the screw holes that I drilled in earlier, but I've adjusted that in the plan, so you guys don't have to worry about it. So once I popped it off the double stick tape, I drilled in some new screw holes and reattached the slats. 
Next, it was finally time to glue the base together. So to do that, again, I'll use some outdoor friendly glue and a pair of clamps. And I'll admit this F-style clamp is humongous, but it has the largest throat of any clamp I have. Once the glue had dried, I pulled the clamps off and applied a thin layer of epoxy to the area where the end grain would come in contact with the ground. And this will just stop moisture from being sucked up into the wood. From there, it was time to ease the edges on those slat supports. And to do that, I just used a block plane and a sander. I used the block plane first to remove the bulk of the material and kind of ease in my shape. And then from there, I used my random orbit to ease the slant and make it more gradual. You could, of course, accomplish the same thing with a sanding block, but if you got the tools, use them. I had two areas where the screw hole had poked through on the edge, so I went ahead and added a small amount of wood glue and sawdust and then just sanded it back. Since this is under the table, no one should really ever see it. And if you'd like to support the channel, I'll invite you to join my Patreon, where you'll get discount codes on plans and merch, plus access to the Discord server and some other cool stuff. And to all those who've already joined, thank you very much for your support. From there I could burn Timber Biscuit Woodworks into the bottom with a hot piece of metal. Now for the finish on this one I'm going to be using Osmo's UV Protection Oil. I recently used it on my planter box build and I was really happy with the results. So happy in fact that I sanded back the Chase Lounge and refinished it in the same oil. So it only makes sense to use it on the table. I'm hoping that it lasts a little bit longer than the penetrating oil, although I gotta say that the patina that the penetrating oil left is pretty awesome. After about 36 hours and two coats, it was time to attach the tabletop to the base. And to do that, I'm gonna use figure eight fasteners. Now I've used these a bunch on other builds and I really like how easy they are to attach. If they do start rusting, I'll be sure to update you guys and swap them out for a different product. So I just use a forstner bit to drill just below the thickness of the clip and then remove the remaining material with my chisel. This just offsets the clip to the left and make sure that it has a nice fit on the base. Then using a self-centering drill bit, I pre-drill and drill in a screw. Once I have all four clips attached to the base, I flip the base over and attach it to the top. Now one added benefit of using figure eight clips is that if there is any seasonal movement, which honestly there shouldn't be, the figure eight clips will adjust with the top. And just like that, the toadstool table was born. So yeah, this was a really fun build. I think the mushroom shape and overall design is really complementary to the design of the Chase Lounge, but it also stands alone. So make it the perfect pair or just make it by itself. If you enjoyed this project and you wanna see more like it, click this video over here next. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one and I'll see you next time.